friends, Russians and countrymen, lend me your ears for this evening on the Tonight Show with Mikhail Bulgakov. We are joined by the communist, revolutionary and hopeful leader of tomorrow's Russia. Here to corrupt our minds and waste our time with his bald dash on state control. Please welcome the one and only Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. So I want to start off by asking about a certain red pamphlet I found slid under my door this morning. Well, you're referring to the state and revolution. Frankly, you should really stop flooding your mind with propaganda from those capitalist scums in the government. Capitalist scum, you say? So tell me, what exactly is the state and revolution about? Without, of course, ruining too much for our viewers. How dare you suggest that our intentions lay with earning profits? Our word is the people's word. It must be heard by all. The proletariat is uniting. Labourers everywhere are breaking their chains. A revolution is on the horizon. I'm deeply sorry, sir. I meant no offence. Please, proceed. Enlighten us with your superior wisdom. The state is an organ. An organ for the oppression of one class by another. The existing state cannot be reconstructed. It must be smashed and broken. Even though our pamphlet is unfinished, I hope it may be completed soon. Although viewing the current state of affairs, that might be hard to do. So, what exactly can we expect to find in this first publication? Try your best to keep it family friendly. We, want, we, we wouldn't want this taken off the air, you know. More capitalist jargon. How I commiserate with such infidels. This pamphlet is our revolutionary theory. For without a revolutionary theory, there cannot be a revolutionary movement. We hope the people understand the need for a revolution in Russia, but also for insurrection to spread throughout the world. Before I forget, we have acquired a certain photograph of you before you turn into a man of the stature we are familiar with today. A very handsome young boy, I must say. Where could you have possibly gotten that picture from? My little birds are everywhere. Even in Simbursk, they whisper to me the strangest of stories. Speaking of Simbas, tell us more about your growing years. Very well. I was born in 1870 in Simbursk. My parents were both very well educated. My father was a teacher. I frankly was an excellent student graduating secondary school with high honours. I remember playing chess every free minute I had. The strategies, they fascinated me. But I came to my true senses when my father passed away. I was a, I was a young lad, only 16. And Soon after my father's death, my brother, he joined a revolutionary group that, that planned to assassinate the Tsar and he too was hanged for his crimes. Sacha was caught and executed by the government. <gasps> that is unfortunate. Hanging is obviously not an appropriate punishment for someone who planned to assassinate the sovereign head of our esteemed state. Um, tell me more about your alma mater. Certainly. Uh, my days as a revolutionist first began when I attended Kazan University. Uh, I remember the first time I was arrested. Oh, I wait, I think we have your mugshot. Ah, uh, I didn't realize I started bowling so early. To be fair, it isn't my family, my brother, my father. Uh, anyways, at Kazan, I joined the local Zemdiak Chess Corps. And due to my unmatched intellectual prowess, I was elected as representative to the University's MDR Chesco Council. And was it your unmatched intellectual prowess that got you arrested? Uh, well, in a way. You see, I, I think in the December of 87, we were part of a revolutionary demonstration against certain policies of Alexander II's government. They had banned student societies and I truly felt that, that youth representation was key to progression. Uh, the police arrested me, proclaiming that I was the ringleader of the protest and I was expelled from Kazan immediately and sent away from the city. Good day. Ah, oh, for me, yes. Have you seen the state that city is in today? Theists and apostles of the, of the Mohammedan, the Talmud, they swarm the streets. Atheism is a natural, inseparable part of Marxism, of, of the theory and practice of scientific socialism. Anyways, they let me back to Kazan after a while. I couldn't attend any university classes. However, I was allowed to graduate. In fact, it is with my degree from there that I was able to practice law. Calling for socialism on national TV? 
watch our ratings plummet. Interesting, you brought up Marx. What are your thoughts on the man? Oh, well, all the credits go to Nikolai Fedosev. I joined his revolutionary circle back in Kazan, picked up Das Capital, and oh, was I inspired. In his own words, which I must admit I quote very often, the philosophers have only interpreted the world in many ways. The point, however, is to change it. And I, I saw a need for this change. I see a need for this change. Several of my literary works, in fact, were based on Marxist ideals. Uh, materialism and emporio criticism, what must be done, and even this red pamphlet. Obsessed much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a segment called Rumor Has It. <laughs> for those of you who are new to the show, to sum it up, here's a quick TLDR. We had our viewers write in with rumors about our selected personality, and he has 10 seconds to respond by either confirming or denying and defending himself against the public's opinion. Ah, my favorite segment. It is the people's right to know the truth. First up, we have Kisinov from Belgorod Oblast. Rumor has it Lenin wanted Russia to suffer defeat in World War I. He was an anti-nationalist. Proclamatia, of course I wanted the Tsarist regime to fall. Look at the rampant poverty and famine. That is real good riddance. Next, we have Pochakin from Petrograd. Rumor has it Lenin lay with other women while engaged to his now wife. Such an <gasps> adulterer is not fit to lead a political entity. Ridiculous! How dare someone accuse me of fornication! It is such nonsensical propaganda that tears down men! Next up, we have Vanya from Moscow. Rumor has it Lenin suffers from syphilis, and it is dangerous to have such promiscuous men in our midst. Uh, well, I'm not going to deny it. Uh, my hair has been falling out at an accelerated rate, and my wife did notice some rashes on my thigh, but no official comment till I get examined by a professional. Uh, and finally, we have Kolya from Sochi. Rumor has it Lenin has changed his name so many times. From Vladimir Ulyanov to Petrov to Lenin, how can a man so confused about his own identity be fit to rule a country? I have my phases. I was entranced by the beauty of the river Lena in Siberia. That's where I got my current name. Names of individuals are cosmetic properties. What truly matters is our power as a community. Interesting you mentioned Siberia. Our last rumor comes from Balto in Siberia. Rumor has it Siberia is where Lenin was truly radicalized. If it weren't for his exile, maybe the world wouldn't have to suffer at the hands of a delusional communist. Take your time on this one. It's a powerful claim. Tell us more about your exile. Ah, my exile. I was wondering if anyone would ask me about it. I was exiled in 97 for writing Marxist literature. It wasn't just me, in fact. Uh, Dostoevsky, one of my colleagues, he too was sent away for questioning the government's economic policies. It was and is common practice, I'm afraid, eliminating opposition. Finally, you made good use of the past 20 years away from this prosperous country. It, you know, it wasn't 20 years that I was initially exiled for, it was three. I, you know, I came back and had seemingly learned nothing. Uh, I was exiled from St. Petersburg, at the time St. Petersburg, by the Tsar, and it was one of the worst decisions he could have made, and he did make a lot of bad decisions. Roaming Europe, I was able to rationalize my views, meet revolutionaries, and learn much more about governance than I would have been able to learn if I stayed back here. So you accepted that it was your exile which truly radicalized you? I mean, I have always been radical in thought. But my exile truly taught me to be radical in my action, too. Of course. You have the people backing you, too. Anyways, you took the country by storm. When you came back from exile with a series of 10 Bolshevik directives, directly calling for a revolutionary political international against the social chauvinists and against the center, you denounced the provisional government weeks after it was established. What were you trying to achieve? Ah, the April Theses. It's only been a few months since I showed the people of the motherland the truth. And I was, frankly, blown away by the reception. Like I said in the third directive, 
I recognize that our Bolshevik party is in the national minority and our current opponents, the petty bourgeois opportunist elements from the larger majority bloc. The intention of the CCs was to educate the people who have been misled by leftist or social revolutionary propaganda and to call for a republic of Soviets of workers, agricultural laborers and peasants deputies across the country from top to bottom. Brilliant! What other absurd things did they call for? Are you suggesting that that people should happily live under the provision of government and the utter falsity of its promises? Are you suggesting that, that labourers should be conscripted for, for petty imperialist war? No! It is the people who must be served. It is the labourers who must be paid well. Workers of the world, unite! For you have nothing to lose but your chains. Please sit down. Don't make me call security. Freedom in capitalist society still remains about the same as it was in the ancient Greek republics. Freedom for slave owners! Security! Let's go to a break. Comrades, rise with me, rise to your oppressors, grind the capitalists between the millstones of taxation and inflation that they create. Say it with me. Peace, land, bread, 